share screen. Start broadcast. All right. As always, if you all could, well, Mula closed the chat. So Mula, if you uh, if you have the ability to let me know that y'all can hear me, you can see my screen, all that good stuff, and then we'll start start rolling here. Do, do, do. Give it just one second here. If someone can confirm just really quick. I want to make sure. All right. We got a yes. Let's get going here. So staking versus holding. Um, the original plan for this lesson was going to be a more by the numbers. Uh, my original goal was to put together some spreadsheets for you guys to give you a little clear insight on differences between if you'd stake your Marvin in night swap, start earning night rewards versus if you hold and the price goes up. Um, the big thing is I found out there's way too many variables and we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so this is going in a little bit different direction that's really designed again, like most of this, how to think about each situation and make the best decision for you. You know, because at the end of the day, we all have different goals, different wants, different needs, different outcomes that we're looking for. So trying to say one way or the other is the best choice as kind of a blanket statement is not really appropriate. You know, staking and farming might not be a good option for you right now. Um, who knows? Um, holding Marvin might not be a good option for you right now. You know, who knows? Only you can decide that. So this is taking more of the path of how you can come to that conclusion, that decision yourself and make the best decision for you. So dive in, a little bit of housekeeping as always. Market is still doing market things, right? Um, that's kind of how it's been that's kind of how it's going uh, i know a16z put out a report at the beginning of the year saying they were expecting this to be a little bit tougher year um that things are going to stay how they are for a while and seem to be right so far so who knows when it's going to go back up i know that we we're getting a little bit of pumps on eth recently that's awesome great to see but again, the market's doing market things. So let's, uh, let's make the best of the situation. The other thing that's really been on my mind lately is just how early we still are. You know, as um, I've been talking with, you know, a lot with Kyle, a lot with uh, just some other friends and people I know in crypto, it's incredible how early we are. Like there's been a ton of money created and made and lost already but here's a really interesting stat i found it's something like 0.3 percent or 0.03 percent of the world population is actively um either trading bought bitcoin crypto anything like that so there's just still so many people who aren't using crypto don't know about crypto and when they do, when they start using that and becomes more and more mainstream, like things are still going to go up, up and up. So you're still early. If you haven't made your millions yet, don't worry. You've got plenty of time. The goal here is to keep you in the market longer, keep you from getting wrecked and buying your time until everything starts to shoot up. You know, Cause there's so, you know, so many projects that are going to stand that test of time and they're going to 3x 10x 100x who knows you know we can't predict the future and the main thing is being able to put yourself in an advantageous position to take advantage of that i mean how many of us would have loved to have an extra thousand dollars five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars 
seeing around right now that we could just start aping into Ethereum, Bitcoin, BNB, you know, whatever your favorite is. It'd be great. So that's what we are, uh, that's what we're working on. That's what we're trying to do with this education series. And, you know, with the Marvin community as a whole, we want you to be better investors. We want you to be more knowledgeable crypto users so that you can make more money, you can make Marvin a better project, you can make the community better, and we can all get rich together, right? The main thing I found out over the past two weeks now, because we didn't really do a full lesson last week because staking math is very complicated and I'll get more into that, but there are so many variables, so many factors to consider that it's really almost impossible to make any kind of one-to-one -one comparison of, you know, if you do this today, what is it going to look like in three months, six months, or a year? All right. So instead, I'd like to start off with this quote. The quality of the question determines the usefulness of the answer. This is something I am really big on. And if you talk to any of my friends, you know that I annoy the ever living hell out of them um, by making sure the questions that they're asking are good questions, you know, because if you're not asking the right question, if you're not asking a good question, it doesn't matter what the answer is going to be. It's not going to be useful. You know, should I hold? Marvin, it's not a great question, you know, it's, hey, you know, maybe a better question might be, hey, if I put my Marvin into the night swap farm today for $1,000, you know, what would be the difference between, you know, what would happen, <clears throat> what would happen, have to happen for me to lose money in a year? You know, that's a better question. It's a complicated question. But if you start diving into that question, if you think about the question that way, then you're going to come up with a better answer. You're going to be able to figure out the different variables, the different things that you need to know. So you can make a question of, oh, maybe I should hold my Marvin. Or maybe I shouldn't. All right. So let's dive into that. Um, today, we got three main points. Problem with the numbers, farm versus holding, and then some strategies here. Um, this, I think, is going to be kind of where we focus the last couple lessons on different strategies for ways to, you know, increase your bag while we're waiting for the market to uh, stop doing the market things. All right. So we got numbers here. Like I said, we've got too many variables to really give a good and accurate estimation, outlook, speculation, prediction for, you know, what things are going to look like in a year. Um, a couple of big things that we have to keep in mind when we're talking about crypto is we are working, whoops, we're working with assets, not dollars. Okay. So that's the first thing. Um, and what makes that complicated is Marvin BNB pair. All right. You put that in the pool. Marvin price can change. BNB price can change. Right. You get paid out at night. The night price can change. And this stuff is happening all of the time. You know, people are trading day to day. Prices go up, go down, you know, depending on how often you look at the chart, whether you look at the 15 minute hour mark, whatever, you see that there's a lot of price changing happening. So depending on when you pull out your night and decide to do something with it, that varies. Come on, fine. Where are you?
Hey guys, uh, I just saw Lula's message that y'all couldn't hear me, so I do apologize that about that. I'm not sure how long that was. Um, I have no idea why it does that. So, um, looks like it was only a couple minutes ago. So let me jump back to. Um, I'll start back with the crash and burn because I think I got through all of that. Um, if anybody wants to let me know. But yeah, can can you all hear me here? Let's let's start let's start with that. I'll wait for a little affirmative. All right, you hear me now. Great. Sorry about that, guys. Um I don't know why Telegram all like it seems like just about every time it kicks me out. So maybe we'll have to start doing these like on a YouTube live and then port them in. So anyways, moving on. Start over with the crash and burn. So <clears throat> when you hold your token or a single token, you expose yourself to a lot more risk. You know, like we were just talking about with um oh shoot, I was <laughs> didn't hear that part. So asymmetric risk, single token, you expose yourself to, if that project goes out due to a black swan event, you're kind of screwed. You know, a black swan event is something that we didn't expect to happen, had no idea could happen and catches people completely off guard and totally wrecks a market or an industry or anything like that. And a great example of that is what just happened with Luna. Sure, some people are saying, oh my God, Luna was unstable. You know, how could you not see this coming? Yada, yada. Sure, maybe. But the way in which Luna collapsed, no one could have predicted, you know, as they're trying to make it more stable by collateralizing it with more Bitcoin, someone saw an opportunity to take advantage of that, had the means to do it, which again, Having four and a half billion dollars, I think, was what the figure was that they needed to do this. Not many people do, you know, have that. You know, not many people can see, you can see that opportunity. So, if you had all of your money in Luna and just taking advantage of only that Luna network, you would have been wiped out. And I'm sure we all know someone who has was wiped out from Luna. So. Do you really want to expose yourself to that risk? You know, again, probabilities. If all of your tokens are one project. The probability of you losing everything goes a lot higher than, let's say, you start staking and diversifying that into three, four, five, six projects. One project goes down. Now you're losing 20%, 15%, of your net worth, not all of it. All right, so again, that just increases probability of success. And then back to, you know, these kind of questions relate. Do you have the courage to exit? That's a big thing. You know, not only can you um, predict when the top is, do you have the courage, you know, like, it's so easy when you see a chart pumping. Oh man, I want to stay in. I want to stay in, squeeze a few more dollars out, squeeze a little bit more out. And then someone sells. And it's a big sell. They took their profits. And now the chart starts going down. So that original 50X that you had 10 minutes ago, 2X, 3X, maybe even dips lower. You know, maybe people think that uh, some some fishy is going on or something crazy is going on and people start panic selling because they saw how many people waited for Luna to come back or waited for another project to come back and got wrecked. So they're all out. So again, do you have the courage to exit in the moment when it's happening? Or do you have decision frameworks that say, Hey, when there's two X's, I'm taking out my initial investment, laying the rest ride to 10X. Once it hits 10X, I take out half and let it ride. Because now at that point, two X's take out your initial investment, goes to zero, who cares? 
you haven't lost any money. Let write up to 10x, take out half of that, you made $5,000. If it goes up or down from there, who cares? You know, you 5x your initial investment. That's great. That's fantastic. You can win if you keep doing that. So, did you sell at the top? Yes or no? And do you have the courage to exit? Another big thing to consider when holding, one moon. You know, we hear that all the time. One moon, one moon, one moon. Seriously, when? As I've said all along, as Kyle has said, is just about everybody from the core team. We can't tell the future. We don't have a crystal ball. We don't know. There's so many market conditions and market factors to think about and consider but that it's impossible to predict. Could it happen next week, next month, next year, two years? Um, or was I think SHIB? Um, Maybe SHIB, I might be getting the project name wrong, but um, we'll go with SHIB. So that pumped and did crazy things, what, last year, two years ago? Most people don't realize, like, that project's been around for seven years, something like that, you know? Do you have the courage and the ability to hold on to um, a project's token for five, six, seven years waiting for that moon? You know, there's a lot of people who sold off at various times in that five to seven year period because they're like, oh, this isn't going to do anything. This isn't going to do anything, whatever. I'm out. I'm going to go elsewhere. And if they would have held, they would have been millionaire. So can you hold for five years? Can you hold for seven years? Who knows, right? Um, you know, do you know all the variables? for when this could moon, you know? Do you know the inside track for what the US government, Canadian government, Russian government, Chinese government, Japanese government, UK government, you know, literally every government on the planet has different viewpoints about cryptocurrency and regulations and what they wanna do. And while yes, what the US government does kind of flows out to everybody else, it still, who knows? You know, we've seen Russia and China flip back and forth several times. Crypto's banned, crypto's not banned, crypto's banned, crypto's not banned. At any of those points, one of those countries banning crypto or trying to do something to heavily regulate crypto could cause a big outflow from the market. You know, China has a lot of people. And if all of a sudden something's happening where they truly do manage to somehow ban crypto or make it almost impossible for most of China to invest in crypto, everybody's going to be taking their money out. So all things to consider, all things to consider. And there's just so many variables, it's impossible to do it. Because even if you think you've considered all the variables, another great question to ask yourself, what variable have you not considered that could wreck you? Yeah, that's a really hard question. It's a really hard question that most people don't want to think about. But what are the things that you aren't considering? There's so many different variables. So who knows? Who knows what's going to happen, when it's going to happen? All right. I'm going to check back in Telegram. Okay, looks like I'm still in. Got a little PTSD from all these kickouts here. All right, so as we're waiting for the moon... Think about opportunity cost, all right? So opportunity cost is essentially everything else you could have done with that money in the meantime. So if you have $1,000 that you put into Marvin and just left it sit there, what else could you have done with that $1,000 in the next year, three years, five years, 10 years, right? Yeah, Marvin could blow up in seven years. But if you've taken that thousand dollar Marvin cut in half or started buying BNB to add on to it, staking that, you know, dropping the farm, started accruing money, you know, three year or excuse me, one year at current rates, that Marvin would BNB would turn into about three thousand dollars, right? Five years 
I don't know. Compound interest is crazy. So it could be $20,000, $30,000, $40,000 in that. And now year six, when Marvin pumps, you have three times, five times, six times the Marvin as you would if you have just held that original $1,000, right? There are other things you can do with that money too. As you start to accrue that, you can put it into other assets, diversify those. And maybe five years from now, Marvin pumps, but because you've been diversifying, you have extra $100,000 from different projects moving up. They can throw back into Marvin before it does or catch it right up when it goes. You know, so all things to consider here um, with what your money could be doing while you're waiting for that moon, right? Because if you just let it sit, it's unproductive capital. You know, there's not a lot of trading going on right now. In general, the crypto market as a whole, even traditional, you know, even traditional stocks, it's all down. Trading volume is super low right now. Doing much of anything with buys and sells, not a great idea. If you're a really, really good trade trader, I mean, like really good, sure, you can make some money. But are you really good? I don't know many people are. Most people I've talked to that have tried day trading are getting wrecked left and right. Oh, right. Well, I'm getting some getting feedback some here. here. All right, all right. Oh, no. You, Mula. You, Mula. Muting you. All right, um, we're good now. So, an unproductive capital could be doing something right now. So, think about that. Here's another one unforeseen expenses. Let's say six months from now, nine months from now, year from now, your car breaks down, get into a car accident, they don't have insurance. And you have to pull all your money out of Marvin because you don't have enough in your savings and now your Marvin bag is completely gone. Whereas if you have staked it, you put in the farm, in a year, you'd have $3,000. So you pull out a thousand, cool, you're still up to, still up a thousand dollars, still up two X, big deal. And if Marvin pumps next six months, you still get to take advantage of that. You're not completely wiped out. So, all things to start to consider when you're thinking when moon you know because at the end of the day if you know what enough is and you still have marvin or whatever other project it is you're still going to catch that will it only be half yeah but half is still better than nothing you know hundred thousand dollars versus two hundred thousand dollars versus zero still take the hundred thousand two hundred thousand be great sure but $100,000 is still better than nothing, right? Now, another, another big one, paper millionaires. So this is a term I heard um, doing some research on, you know, millionaires and billionaires in the US. And one of the big things is that there's a big difference in wealthy people. There's Paper wealthy and true wealthy. Paper wealthy are uh, CEOs, executives, owners um, that have a company and most of their net worth is based in their stock, right? So guys like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, whatever, they've got a lot of money on paper because of how much stock they hold. Now, if they went and sold that all right away, one, it'd be extremely tough for them to find someone to buy all that stock. Two, them selling it would completely crash that stock. So that hundred billion that they're worth right now might turn into eight, right? We see that happen a lot in crypto. You know, you, um, one of my friend's uh, partners, he, I think he's a SHIB millionaire or something like that. Got tons and tons of money, but you can't pull it out, right? There's not enough liquidity for it to pull out. 
and maybe he's got 10 million in there. If you want to pull out a million, I would completely tank the token. And then the rest of that money wouldn't be worth it. How high would your slippage have to be to pull out a million dollars? Like even that single sell might drop that to 500,000. And then the rest of the SHIB that you have or whatever the project you have is now worth maybe $30,000, who knows? You know, like again, speculative math on that. But that's something you have to consider. Now it's different for, you know, the Jeff Bezos and the Elon Musk and things like that. They can take out loans against um, their assets, you know, their stock and make money that way. Great. But how many coins or tokens can you take a loan out on? You know, Marvin doesn't have a lending platform right now. Most of these small cap tokens don't have lending networks right now. So sure, you have $10 million, $100 million, $50 million, whatever, in one of these projects, but you can't leverage that to get a loan in most cases, right? So you're kind of stuck with it. And it's cool. You can show your friends, hold up your wallet, be like, look how much money that I have that I can't use. So that's something to consider. Whereas if you start to diversify, had less money in more projects, and you need to take out amounts, more you're more able to do that. And I'll get into that in just uh, just a second here. Uh, actually, right there. So, problem with exiting a big position scenario. Five k pumps to five million. First off, again, would you correctly guess the top? Yes or no? Or would you ride that back down to? One million. Who knows, right? Have you been in that position yet? Can you answer that question? Or would you keep pushing for more? You know, would you hope that that five million turns into seven, 10, 15, and again, ride it back down? How much can you sell without taking your investment? You know, like we just talked about. You got $10 million. Can you sell that? Can you sell a million? Is there enough liquidity? Is that going to cause the rest of your investment to go to almost nothing? Who knows? You know, like we saw how much, um, you know, Bitcoin, which has a huge market cap, absolutely insane. And we saw how much that's dropped because of a few big sells from the Luna crash. So again, once you get up to that, you know, ultra whale status where you have several million dollars and you have it in small cap projects, you have to be very conscious of how your behavior is going to affect the rest of that project. It's, you know, like we see it all the time. People are whale watching, right? They see and they look for what big wallets are doing. And if they're selling, then other people are probably going to sell too. So you have to consider that. You know, if you were to remove a thousand dollars a day, you know, doing your best to be a good project um, participant, good investor, you don't want to sacrifice the longevity of the project to pull your money out. It would take you 13.7 years to get all your money out, right? Now, living on $365,000 a year, that's not bad. You know, like that's a, that's a really solid life. Um, but what's that project going to look like three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, you know, is the, are the project owners going to still be with it? Are they still going to be doing the right things? Is it still going to be around? Are you going to be able to get out your money out? All sorts of things that you have to consider when you're hoping for that thousand X pump, 10,000 X pump, turning that $5,000 into 5 million, right? All things to consider. And even if you're pulling out $5,000 a day, still it's gonna take you two and a half years to do that, right? And if you're doing $5,000 sales every day, people are gonna notice, again, whale watching, and be like, oh dang, this person has been selling a lot. Oh dang, they sell a lot more to sell. Like how often do we see people speculate about that um, in Marvin and what people were doing selling and how many people sold because of that? You know, people who don't know better. 
what would you do with the money too, right? Let's say all you needed was um, $2 million, you know? Life you wanna leave, all you need is $2 million, maybe $3 million. And you end up with $10 million. What are you gonna do with the rest of it? You don't need it. Probably figure out you can live exactly the life you want. So why are you trying to push that $3 million into five or 10 or more? Don't do that. More is how you get wrecked. And then the other big thing, do you know how to manage that much money? So when you get into all that money, if your income suddenly increases to $300,000 a year, $500,000 a year, you try to pull a million dollars out, you're going to get wrecked on taxes and different things like that. Um, you're going to have people asking you for money. You're going to be looked at very differently. People are going to try to scam you more. All those sorts of things. You know, if you just look at how many lottery winners are broke within a couple of years, right? And these are people that win millions and tens of millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. They manage to lose it all in a couple of years because they don't know how to manage it, right? So that's cool. You make $5 million in the next year because of some crazy pumps. You somehow managed to exit all of your positions and you have $5 million. What are you gonna do with it? Do you have the tools, the knowledge, and the network and relationships that you can continue growing that money, or is it gonna be gone two and three years and you're back where you started? Right? Because the biggest predictor of success is time in market. Warren Buffett, I think if you look at his average, like he only beats the market by like 10%, 20%. Yeah, you know, like he's not a great trader. He's just been doing it for a long time, a long time. And he's let that all compound. And that's how he's made his money, right? So it's much easier to stay in the market with an easy strategy than it is to try to be good enough that you can pick all the winners, right? So a few things to consider. And then we're going to wrap up today with some strategies for success. And um, would love to hear some feedback on this part because I'm thinking the last couple of lessons, I'm going to dig more into strategy and how to come up with a strategy of your own, some different things to think about and do with your strategy. Um, I think that would be the most helpful for everybody here because um, the only other direction I can go is to get more technical and just getting more technical in the numbers is always as helpful. So we'll go over this. We'll see what you guys think at the end. All right. I think we can. So start with $1,000 of Marvin BNB pair, right? Current interest rate, that's about 24 night per day. It's about $3. It doesn't sound like much. As I've said, if you like the compounding and you want to keep putting your Marvin into, or excuse me, keep putting your night back into your Marvin, by the end of the year, you're going to have roughly 3K. Everything stays the same. You have 3K. So $3 doesn't seem like a lot day to day, but if you're going to triple your investment in a year, that's pretty solid. Now, you have options. You could just straight out buy Marvin, right? So if you think we're going to be in a recession for the next 12 months, maybe 18 months, whatever it is, and you think prices are going to remain the same for that time, maybe every day or once a week, you buy Marvin, you know? So $3 a day right now, current price is about 2.5 million Marvin. Um, multiply that by seven and you're my math. I can't do math today. So it's 14, 17, 17 million Marvin a week, right? That's not bad. Start collecting that over the course of the next year and you just hold on to that uh, because, you know, you still want to increase that hold bag. You know, you still 
fully believe that once the market corrects, that Marvin's going to do that 1,000x, and you want to take advantage of that. That's perfect. That's great. You know, do that. But that thousand dollars that was sitting there doing nothing, if you're just holding for the next year, could be generating 17 million Marvin per week. And that turns into 365, uh, 6205 billion, maybe. Oops. I don't know. Um, Something like that. Let's go to uh, oops, nope, not three sixty-five. Um, fifty-two. That's how many weeks. There we go. So that turns into a hundred and thirty million, Marvin. Wow, that was. Again, this is why we don't do math, folks. This is why I don't get into complicated math. Uh, but still, one hundred thirty million, Marvin, by the end of the year. That's a pretty solid bag, you know, and Marvin 10Xs, 20Xs, 100Xs, you're doing really great. Now, the other thing is you could hold on to this night, right, and put in the Marvin raid pool. I think right now that's somewhere around 50%. So now you start to diversify. So you're holding night. So if you think night swap is a good dex, you think Wolf Den and those guys are doing the right things to grow night swap, then you hold on to those night tokens and you know maybe they go from 12 cents to 50 or to a dollar right over the course of that year you know because that is a dex you know as the dex grows like they're a new dex like they could get more people in there more projects in there during this um, recession time period and that can grow right so now that night is starting to grow and accumulate and you're having the Marvin raid earning that 50% and that night continues to go up because again, a DEX is a much more general utility. You know, even in a down market, a, step, a DEX still has value and still provides value for people because they're earning um, on their farms and new projects are coming in and they're increasing liquidity and total value locked and all that good stuff. So that could go up. So now you're earning who knows how much Marvin, right? And it keeps going up. So now you could even have more in that year, Marvin. Still have the thousand dollars in here, because you've been putting all in tonight. The more Marvin that's accumulated, plus all of this still stays as night, you know? So you still have all of that night. And you know, let's say 24. You get 24 night a day for the next year. Some math times 365 is 8,760 night, right? So 12 cents now. So that's times 0. 0.12. Still, so, you know, thousand dollars. Now you have a thousand dollars a night. If it doesn't go in value, plus this Marvin. All right, it's taking a while to accumulate that 1,052, so you know, don't expect that it's going to be half, but you still have that Marvin that's sitting there that you've accumulated, right? Now, let's say that 24 night that you're in a day, right, is an 8,706 night. Now, let's say that price goes to 50 cents. So now, you have $4,380 a night there. Plus the Marvin that you accumulated, plus the Marvin you still have. Oh, and don't forget, as night goes up, you're getting more Marvin because that 50% payout is based on how much dollars you have in the pool. So, all things to consider. And that's just keeping it within Marvin. You know, you got some really three really great options keeping it with art within Marvin. If you want to Keep increasing your Marvin bag. Now, if you want to start to diversify, you can always move that Marvin into other coins. We've got a lot of options here. So you just straight diversify, right? You can start buying USDC, 
other stable coins to lower your risk. You can also diversify into things and take more risk, right? This is all free money, remember, right? This is free money, right? This is money that you're getting just for holding on to this, just like you would be right now. The market's down. Most of us, our bags are down, so no point in selling. So hold on to it and get free money. So you get free money here. And you take that free money and you can do risky stuff with it. You know, you can take, let it accumulate for a couple weeks or a month, you know, make a play in some project that you got some alpha on, some project that sounds very bullish and you drop a hundred dollars into something turns into a thousand, pull out 500, cool. Hey, $500. They can turn back into Marvin. And now you're back to your original investment, right? So now your bag hasn't gone down at all. You know, and that's all free money. And now you still have $500 in this new project that probably will pump a little bit more. Maybe it goes down a little bit, maybe it pumps a little bit more, but hey, in the next year, you see that it's gone up another 3X. That $500 that you left in there is now 1,500. And top of that, if you um, are picking projects that are in the night swap ecosystem, you can stake those, whether it's single sided or you know double sided. Start earning interest on that. You know, so that five hundred or a thousand dollars that you made a DGEN play on now is starting to earn, say, twenty percent, fifty percent. You know, depending. Who knows? But now that's earning money. So now you have. One, two, three different ways they're making you money. Well, two different ways. Uh, but you keep going, or you know, you could split that 500 into two things and diversify. But that more, more times you diversify, the more chances you have to catch a pump. You know, if you have five different tokens, 10 different tokens, as the market goes up, all of those things are going to go up in different amounts. And again, impermanent loss, if you have held it all in one, sure. But personally, I like the safety and security. So I like the diversification, right? Now I can catch maybe in three months, one of these tokens pumps. And six months, another token pumps. And then 12 months, maybe Marvin pumps now, right? But in that time, I had these other pumps that I could feed back into Marvin. Marvin's my golden goose, right? Fund your golden goose, whether it's Marvin, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's Ethereum, whether it's BNB, whether it's who knows what, but whatever that is. And if that's something that in five or 10 years, you are really confident, you know, you think there's a very high probability that it's going to increase. You know, there's tons of people talking about you know, Bitcoin going up to 100K next few years. You know, some people are even saying that in 10 or 20 years, Bitcoin could be a million dollars a coin. Who knows? But if you've been accumulating Bitcoin all that time, right? And you have and know what enough is and what that time frame is, that you're just buying Bitcoin over the next... 10 years dollar cost averaging into that. And we have that $100,000, $250,000, $300,000, whatever Bitcoin, all that money that you've been accruing for that keeps going up, right? So that long-term appreciation. And that's why it's so important to know what enough is and know what time horizon you're shooting for. Because when you're looking at those long-term time horizons, you are okay. And in fact, probably happier if this recession stays for a while. You know, If you have a strategy in place that is printing you free money, oops, printing you free money, you know, $3 a day, um, you know, turns to $21 a week. If you're buying $21 a week of Bitcoin right now at... 
was it like 18 to 20 ish? I haven't looked at Bitcoin in a while. But if it stays there for the next 12 months, you know, and you put a thousand dollars in there and you're staking your Bitcoin, you know, because places you can do that earning maybe 5%. Think of how much that's going to go up in the next 10 years, right? If it stays here for the next year. And then, you know, let's say, end of 2023 markets start pumping up and all that you know thousand fifteen hundred ish dollars in bitcoin that you have and bitcoin starts to shoot up to back to that 40k mark or even to 60k now this is tripled so now this is a 3x right so there are all things to consider here as we're going through now, if you're doing well, if you're on track, if you're pat, um, not on track, if you are, if you're on track, you're doing better, you know, where you're going to hit that, um, that number sooner, you start moving your money into stables, right? Now you can start to protect yourself. Oh, come on. Now you can start to protect yourself from market downturns. You know, if you put most of your money into USDC, BUSD, some, um, you know, one of those that are actually backed and can hold a peg, not an algorithmic stable coin. Now you start to lower your risk, be more confident. And these you can still stake and farm. You know, it's going to be a lower percentage, but even 1% to 5%. If you're moving money into that and accruing that, that adds up over time too, right? So you have that option too. You have an option to even further lower your risk, you know ensure that if a another downturn happens because it probably will you know this is still really early there's a lot of volatility that's going to be happening as new people come in and this and more people adopt crypto like we're going to see some up and down times for sure so this next downturn where everything cuts in half and oh dang you have accumulated twenty thousand dollars in stable coins Great. Now you can pick up a much more Bitcoin or whatever your golden goose is. Um, any of those things are possible if you have money sitting there. And if you have that long time horizon where you know that you don't need this for 10 years, you can buy something when it's on discount and that's going to go up. You know, it might be two years, might be three years, but that's okay. We're not worrying about this for 10. So it's fine. And then the other thing you can do too is if you're doing really well, um, you start funding your life with it. You know, you can start taking some of those profits. You know, if you're at a point where maybe say you're making five hundred to a thousand dollars a month passively, and you're still feeding some of these other things, um, you can pull that out. You can start working less right now. You know, again, this is your life to do whatever you want with, and run however you want. And all of these strategies can work and it cannot work depends on what your goals are depends on what you want to do what kind of life you want to lead and you have to know that before starting right you have to start with that so you have those decision frameworks and that decision making already laid out so now it's just a matter of if x then why? Now you don't have to worry about your emotions. All you have to do is follow the strategy you laid out and you know you're going to hit your solvable problem. All right, guys. So that's about it for today. Um, I appreciate everybody who stuck around for the 90 minutes here. Um, like I said, it was supposed to be a bunch of numbers today, but as I dug in, that wasn't going to help you guys. Uh, the math is really complex, really confusing. If someone's a mastodon out there and wants to explain it better, go for it. But at the end of the day, I think it's much more valuable for you guys to consider these big frameworks and the questions in there, right? And start to develop that strategy, figure out how to get to enough. And 
I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the last couple of weeks of the base case series, I am going to dive more into a few different strategies and how to pick strategies that will work for you. I think that's gonna be the most beneficial for everybody here. And for those who are interested, excited nerds and want to dig more into the technical side of things, there's tons and tons of resources by very smart people that can let you get in there. Um, but yeah, so I would love to hear your feedback. Uh, I will make sure that the form is posted with this. Uh, so y'all can let me know if uh, you want to hear more about strategies or if you want to hear more about something else. And um, by all means, like if you have certain scenarios, you know, if anybody wants to share kind of um, some details about what they're trying to achieve, um, I can see what I can do with some suggestions for uh, different ways I would do it if I was in that situation. You know, of course, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial planner. I don't have any of those licenses. So do your own research. I am only giving you information things to think about, better ways to thinking so you can make better decisions for yourself. At the end of the day, I want you to be making decisions for yourself and um, knowing how to make those decisions. So if I can give you a few more options to help guide your thinking, your decision making, I would love to do it. And I will um, kind of close it down for today. As always, I'll give a minute or two here for anybody who might want to Pop in with a quick question. I'm going to oh. uh, pop in with a quick question um, if you have any. Otherwise, um, I will shut it down and uh, we will leave it for next time. All right, I will take that as no one has any questions for now so we'll work on getting this up on the youtubes here for everybody who did not get a chance to join us live i will post the link to the question form and hopefully i'll get some good feedback from you guys and we can come up with uh, a few different strategies that will get everybody making some money and on track for their fu number so hope you all have a great rest of your week and uh, hope you outside have some fun, do some fun things, and enjoy your life.